there's a game that is coming out. Uh, I cannot tell you what it's called, but it was it's a anti-stealth game yeah. uh, where you're actually supposed to stay within the view of surveillance well, equipment. Was released this week. Oh yeah, <laughs> get it? Get it. What? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, so I saw that. And I was like, you know, there's there's some uh, the stealth genre is great, but I mean, you know, to to shake it up a little bit, you're gonna have to do things that don't involve infiltrating enemy bases or stealing things. And so um, uh, this kind of ran parallel with an issue I've been having the last week uh, as I walked to my German class in that. The streets are in sidewalks are completely filled with people just kind of getting in my way, and purposefully so. Um, Berlin is kind of known for having a, uh, a pretty um, intense homeless population uh, mm-hmm. in the touristy sections, uh, and nothing against uh, you know homeless people. It's, it's, it's a very difficult life, but they're somewhat uh, aggressive here. So that's not a big deal if that's all you have to deal with. But then you also have the pamphlet pushers, uh, who are these... People that are supposedly doing things for good causes, like helping children and old people, but they're it. unbelievably aggressive to the point that these people in blue jackets will step in front of you as you're in the sidewalk and like kind of follow you to like stay in your way. And it's just like, what? That's that's a really strange thing, um, and, and it's kind of off-putting. So then I thought, well, you know, maybe uh, maybe this is just me in a funk. And so perhaps you could create a game that is a guy who is in a funk, or maybe he's not in a funk, he just hates everybody, which is kind Lucky of a guy. funk if you think about it. Lucky stuff. Um, and your whole goal is to avoid, you know, social <laughs> situations completely <laughs> without looking too much like a dick. And so basically <laughs> the whole thing is you've got, uh, I guess we'll call it your asshole meter. And so you're, you're because it'd be very easy just to avoid all social situations. <laughs> it needs to be a standard feature in a lot of games. Well, oh, absolutely should. Um, but, you know, it'd hole. be... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a tiny hole and just gets it gets tighter and tighter and tighter as you. Uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, it'd be very easy just to sit inside and avoid social situations altogether. But you, you, you still want to maintain uh, maybe what I'll call a, uh, a you know a nest egg of social um, enjoyment. Yeah. Um, and so you don't want to completely burn all your bridges, you know. And so you're whole, you're kind of navigating things. You're thinking of bullshit excuses for not, you know, hanging out with people. Um, you're trying to be as polite as possible, you know, by turning down people in the streets. Um, you know, you're being, uh, you know, uh, anti sim respectfully. Well, yeah, probably anti sims. Yeah, that's probably, probably very true. But but with this whole element of you kind of like, you know, there's there's there's. Almost maybe a, uh, and we talked about Papers, Please, uh, the last time we talked, but there's almost an element of that's kind of like that set up with social networking. So that's one side of the game. So it's you like making sure you're keeping track of the excuses you've used and making sure that you don't appear, you know, at a restaurant with people, you know, on a Facebook page or whatnot. And then the other half of it is you sneaking around like an open city where there's a lot of people and they're happy and jovial and you've got kind of like a gray cloud of like, you know, again, funk around you. And so as you get closer to people, it shrinks and you become, you know, you get a little bit brighter and that's not good for you in this game. In the context of this game, this is not good. Right. Um, and so, yeah, your whole goal is just to avoid social com- uh, uh, confrontation without, um, uh, you know, making yourself look like too much of a, you, too much of a beehole. Do you, you want will. us to send you a hug? I mean, yeah. are you okay? No, no, no. It's just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, no, I'm, this is not a reflection of, well, it's kind of a reflection based on the story, but I thought about how I was like, man, I, am I being an asshole or is there a way that I could circumvent all of this kind of stuff? When I, uh, when I lived in Boston, the, like I had those moments where, especially early morning when I was uh, riding the train and, and going across town to, to get to work, like. I just didn't want to deal with people at all. And yeah, Mm -hmm. you kind of had those strategies of the best way to avoid um, social interactions. (laughs) Um, Yeah. um, And there were, you know, there were routes to take. There were behaviors to, um, you know, uh, wear wear headphones. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm not listening to anything, I I can't hear you. I just, uh, it's it's, it's really important. It's the modern modern cell phone, you know. Yeah. And there's your upgrade. You know, yeah. you, you start out maybe this, you start the game with like, you know, like a boom box, which is, you know, a little bit too big, <laughs> but then you can eventually upgrade to something else. But I mean, again, when you live in a major city, uh, 
you can be the nicest person on the planet and you will have that day that you just don't want to talk to anybody sure. and look at anybody and you don't want to be stopped and being given a pamphlet about Scientology. Scientologist. I, I don't want to be a Scientologist. I know what your shit is. I know what you're doing. And don't you dare hack into this podcast and shut us down because, you know, I'm anti your message because I am because it's weird fucking <laughs> volcanoes. I think one thing the game should make you do first, though, is to select a language that you don't understand. Oh, that that could, that's almost like your stealth. You know, remember in Metal Gear Solid uh, Snake Eater where you could create your own stealth and that one of your items could be like, uh, you know, like, ich spreche English. Because that's what I do all the time. If I don't want to talk to someone, I say, oh, no, no, no. Or 999 and I walk down the street. But yeah, maybe that could be one of the elements of that too. That's absolutely great. How do yeah, you... Just or, a, and it's like the difficulty level. It's like, okay, what's your normal... Language. Okay, English. <laughs> what language do you not know anything about? And then it gives you a list and you have to select one. And oh, yeah. It's just in that language. How do oh, you... man, that would be... What's winning? Uh, winning, you know, I, I wonder if maybe it's a week. Maybe you just have a week that you have to get, you know, through. and, and, and Or maybe it's just open-ended. Maybe it's... You know, you get a. I kind of like this idea of some of these games that give you kind of this open ended, and we'll talk about this later, but you know, a game like Banished, where you're not going to win the game necessarily. It's like, how far can you go by staying within these parameters? And I like that idea. You know, like it's a high score type game. You know, like how far, can, how long can you go avoiding social situations? Because I've got friends like this. I've got friends who. I, I will rarely talk to, but I'm still in good standing with them. And they, they're the biggest flakes on the planet. They never show up to anything, but I'm still in good standing because they 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 play the system really well. They're really good at it. And I'm like, you know, that's what this game should be. It's, it should be a high score type game with you trying to be the most uh, uh, pleasant, in- <laughs> uh, socially inept. I was going to say uh, invisible. Or, or, you know, like, well, I yeah, feel, I mean, that's, I feel like there's the um, you get too much attention. You you're miserable. Uh-huh. If you almost attract negative attention, it attracts the attention of your friends to make sure you're okay, and you don't want that either. You want to be just okay. completely yeah. under the radar, antisocial, but I'm okay. But yeah, like I'm not. It's okay, guys. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine without saying that because that is you know a big you know that's what people do on Facebook when they want attention. They say. I'm okay. I'm okay. And everyone, you know, like, or that whole, like, oh, I'm feeling sad today. Like, that kind of stuff. Like, playing with an, oh, <laughs> see, I think this is actually a really good game. It's like, at a first, it was kind of a starve. joke. You get, yeah, it, it kind of is. It kind of is like a social don't star. You get punished uh, when your character makes self deprecating comments on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> well, or maybe that's a way for you it's to link to your Facebook, your real Facebook. So then okay. your friends really think you're messed up. Well, or you, like what maybe your level of, uh, let me think. So a self-deprecating comment on Facebook would raise the level of awareness to you. So maybe if you're falling too far under, you could put one of those in. Like, you know, that's kind of like your power up at that point. Like feeling glum today and you get just enough attention that you need. But then if it goes out of control and you post it at like 3 p.m. when everybody's almost done with work and fucking around on the internet, then like 20 people see it and then that like throws your, I mean, all that kind of stuff, you know, working within that parameter. I think about this stuff probably too much. <laughs> God, I sound like an asocial dick. Sorry, guys. Well, hopefully you're going to stick with us for the next hour because this is The Horrible Show. From HorribleNight.com for February 25th, 2014. Uh, coming at you live on Twitch TV slash Horrible Night. There's all the intro stuff except for the fact that I'm the host, Justin Lacey. The happy man with the initial game pitch tonight, Ethan Moses. Oh, yeah, that's me. I'm Ethan Moses. And, and I am happy. Yeah, I think so. Is that a question mark? I just want to give you, <laughs> to give you a hug. And uh, I'd also give Jason Thompson us. a hug. Oh, he- hello, human beings of the planet Earth. It's been <laughs> yeah. a while, Jason. <laughs> yeah, it's been, been a little too long. How the fuck have you been? Ah, I've been hanging in there, man. How the... This winter. Ah, <laughs> oh, this winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. started. If you haven't, if you haven't seen anybody in a while, you just talk about the weather, right? It just Glum uh, cast. <laughs> started rain, it started raining. It started snowing those big, fat snowflakes today. Like you knew it wasn't going to accumulate, but it was just like, man, just another, just okay. another fuck you. What? Are, are we okay with, with saying right now that climate change is indeed happening? Because it has been 50 degrees here for the about? last two weeks. Where's global warming? It's really cold. 
Oh, God. Oh, don't get me going off that. <laughs> Talk about social wins. It is nuts. It has not been – like last year this time it was awful, and all I hear is you guys getting like pooped on by Jack Frost. Like He's just like, ah, fuck it. Jeremy, you're yeah, okay. Kinda, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of the – um some some of my first winters growing up like i remember it being being colder and uh we had some good snows uh when yeah, I, was I remember up. that too but uh yeah the last we've I had, mean, the last we've few had it winters, easy the last 10 or 12 yeah. years like yeah the, the last 5 years in particular have been very warm yeah especially last year maybe the year before those two years in particular I yeah but we had that that dicky ice storm two years ago or three oh, years yeah. ago. Well, yeah, that's that's. Remember the, that the code of the ice whole storm world dick. and I, I yeah. <laughs> they started naming those fucking winter storms. That is ridiculous. That is. <laughs> uh, mm. I, still, I still, I still, I forget which comedian it was, uh, saying, but they just need, they need to name storms after rappers or professional mm. wrestlers. I would also throw that in there. I prefer that Hurricane X Pac. Yeah, I was gonna say they sound too pleasant at this point. Hurricane Gina, you're like, ah, oh, I'd have her over for some cookies <laughs> or something. Or Not too some bad. Sort of Greek Greek mythology. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that's maybe too intense. Yeah. So did you really come here to talk about the weather? Yep. Jason, it's not weather I mean, <laughs> I mean, I can talk whatever you know if, about the weather if you want me to. It's what I do for a living. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Want no, to I'm just you know, you know. Lately, I've just been you know watching. You know, Andy and I, we always, we have our own little separate podcast and we have to watch the Oscars and all the movies involved with that. So, you know, binging on those lately, is just finally good, got over a, that. Is it a good, enjoyable Oscar season? I want to say that this year, compared to years past, it was, it's really hard to kind of pick a favorite and cool. that's not a bad thing. You know, they, they expanded the, the best picture category to 10 best pictures. They chose nine this year, which was weird because they don't, they don't have to fill 10. But well, of those Riddick's nine, Riddick's still out there. I know, I know. Why didn't they pick Riddick? I, I mean, there's a great relationship there. That they're missing Vin so, Diesel and his dog. <laughs> yeah, so you know we've been we've been dealing with that, and so that just got over with. Obviously, the Oscars are what this Sunday. Yeah, and so you're, yeah, I was gonna say you're our source for that. I don't know. <laughs> and so you know we're we're doing that, and then we're also getting ready to go down to Austin for South by Southwest. Oh, nice. Which we did last year. Um, we went the second weekend, which was also the week of the music festival, mm -hmm. which was a hot, hot mess in a good way. <laughs> this is the f the the film only week with along with the interactive stuff. So there may actually be some video game stuff I might be able to check out. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed, but I don't know. But we'll be doing that March sixth through the thirteenth, I okay. think. All right. So you know, and that's just kind of a a crapshoot where you just go and kind of choose yeah, what is it? however many movies. So. South by Southwest goes the interactive festival into the music festival into the film. Is that the order? No, it's like they they change they usually change it up, but it's uh like uh, interactive along with film, and mm -hmm. then film continues over music. So film is two weeks, interactives the first week, gotcha. and music the second week. So there's a film overlap. So it may be very you know quiet and calm, but uh, Austin essentially is the Bloomington of Texas, if you want to think about it that way. It's they're very much alike in terms of it's, it's a the, it's an the demographic in the and, middle of that giant state. Yeah, it it really is. It, it definitely is. So, um, yeah, just kind of dealing with that stuff. Mo movies on the mind, Ethan. Yeah. Is there anything been going on? I mean, like I said, do we need to send you hugs? No. Um, I uh, actually the Berlin Film Festival was here two weeks ago. Uh, I didn't go to it though. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a we town walked that have, had a film festival. <laughs> we were yeah, we walked down there to, to to see it, and there was all kinds of people in Berlin. I guess it's big, and I I walked down, I saw the line, and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's too, <laughs> so too social. Left. Yeah, yeah I was like, well, <laughs> well, it, it's too, it's not the social aspect. Just I hate lines too. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I hate a lot I hate of lines. Stuff. I hate traffic. Lines suck. I don't wait in line. I don't know. That sounds like a, something like a very wealthy person would say, but I don't mean it like that. Like I, I hate lines. Like if I have to wait in line, I'm sure I can find a product that may be, you know, of less qu lesser quality, but it's still probably the same thing, you know, I, sandwiches I, and that kind of stuff. So I don't think we're going to, I don't think we're going to send Ethan hugs. We're going to send him a monocle. Yeah. No, I was going to say, yeah, a line. No, thank you, sir. I'll leave. Remember, um, remember but, uh, when we sent him 
by himself to a video game convention. Yeah, that was awful. Yeah, <laughs> that was it was broken. Oh, that was actually it was actually kind of my idea in the beginning. I was like, oh, this will be great. No, I won't do that. We'll have yeah, we should yeah, we should have a big in depth conversation about that if I convince myself to do it this year too. No, I don't know. Love. I kind of think about it fondly, you know, in some ways, but uh, but anyway, but um, uh, what what else did I do? Uh, I don't know. I've been um going to German class. Yeah. Uh, which uh, you know we're we're trying to decide whether or not we want to stay here longer, and um, so I was like, I, I actually have to do you have to something. I had to I had to actually like learn the language, and and because it's you know it's getting tough to find <laughs> a lot of work. You know, I've, I've been here a year and a half. I should probably make some sort of effort. Into <laughs> well, but the, the th- here's the thing about it is everyone here speaks English yeah. and you know, I have Rosetta stone. I've been doing Rosetta stone and it's not, it's just, it's not good. Um, it's, I'm not saying Rosetta stone is not good. It's a good supplementary, you know, program, but I mean, it's not teaching the pronunciation like you need to. So I was like, I need to get, jump in there and, and you know, just, just go with it. So I've been doing that, but the, all of last week I was trying to decide who I was going to be in this class. Cause I haven't been in school since fuck, 2007. So I was like, okay, am I going to be the cool kid? Uh, am I going to be the bully? Am I going to be the mysterious foreign kid? Uh, am I going to be a combination of all of them? Which box I did ended you up, check? Yeah, well, ended up none of them. I was the oldest. I was the old guy. I was the old, <laughs> the older man, and uh, who didn't look like the older man, who looked much younger than everybody else, but was still the old man. And we did this. Uh, we learned how to say. Um, how old we were, and I, I can't even. I I can read German a lot better now, but I'm I'm still struggling to speak it. So I'm not even gonna attempt at this point. But we all went around, and I said, "Oh, yeah, I'm uh, uh, Dreisig," and uh, it, oh, <laughs> Ethan is Dreisig. Ethan is Dreisig, and then she said, "You know, my teacher said something, and it, it, it well, he is the oldest one here. Look to him." For guidance oh. or some, I was like, "Oh God, are you fucking kidding me?" And so yeah, so that, so that was that was cool. So then I had to kick a bunch of people's asses at the end of it, so they didn't take advantage of me. So that was kind of how I went with it. So I ended up being a bully, an old bully, but a bully nonetheless. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm imagining the German version of the Breakfast Club. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit, and I realized Did you take that I had lunch. Yeah. Uh, no, I forgot it. I actually it's brought a banana. Banana sandwiches. That, that was my goal was, was to bring a banana. I left that with me. But I realize I do realize one thing is young people these days wear really tight pants. And uh, I don't know how they do it. There's going to be – and I think it may be a good thing for the world because there is a lot of overpopulation happening. But uh, I think there's going to be just a complete lack of healthy sperm in the future if if – if I could look at Berlin as a as a means, you know, as a, a, of, of kind of monitoring this, it's, it's there's going to be some some sperm lost. You know, update that Seinfeld episode. Oh, ab- yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, man, uh, I had a pretty expensive week last week. Uh, naturally, uh, anytime you splurge for yourself. And um, I picked up an iPad Mini, so that meant uh, the next day I immediately had a a lot of car damage to deal with um so that was fun uh but the ipad mini is pretty awesome it is uh wait, wait, it, what car damage car? potholes man just potholes and wheel damage and ugh. i don't want to go back there i want to talk about my ipad mini because i have to hold on to it for dear life because i have to feel really good about it because i really should have traded it back in to help pay for my car but um we're not doing that we're keep keeping with the ipad mini because it's i think it's the best option for me if I want to do any any tablet gaming. So it's like I, I prefer the smaller form factor. I've had an iPad for quite a while. Um, and uh, me and my fiance were like fighting over the iPad uh, to play threes in the last uh, couple weeks. That's the kind of hot new puzzle game. Um, and uh, so I was like, well, we can't fight over this. I just need to go get my own. And uh, so I got an iPad mini. Been wanting one for a while. And really... Really happy with it. So, um, been playing that, and um, I mainly got it for r- ridiculous fishing because, oh, yeah. because the the regular iPad it is too big to play a tilt game. It's just too yeah. too much. And then I started too playing it on my, I started playing ridiculous fishing on my Android phone, and my phone just sucks. And I just I pretty much just hate phones at this point. Uh, so I need. Yeah, you're having the the Goldilocks syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. This yeah, one's too that. big. This one sucks and too small. And next I'll get us one of those Samsung notes or whatever those those little the phone. Tablets. Will you uh take a picture of your tiny little dog playing uh a game on your tiny little iPad mini? Sure. I wouldn't take, take I, I think that I think that would probably uh that would be a uh, we'll big uh for him. Yeah, definitely put that out. Copyright Ethan Moses. So if you make any money off gotcha. of it, I want, I want, I want it. Or yeah, you know, a little bit of it, five bucks of it, snack money. You know, how small is an iPad Mini? I don't it's think a, I've seen one yet. It's like it's what a it's seven inch, seven inch. Is that right? Yeah. So it's um, a so third, it's an iPhone. A third of the size of a uh, of a regular iPad, I would say. Hmm. Uh, it fits fits well in one hand. Um. I like to pretend when I have it next to me that it's a giant iPhone because it it makes me laugh. I don't know. <laughs> does it, like, oh, look, or does it make a you look big iPhone? Does That's, it make you feel like a smaller person? Uh, yeah, actually, you'd think that wouldn't <laughs> it wouldn't make me laugh, but it does. I avoid any item that make me look smaller than I actually am. So novelty <laughs> size cans of beer, uh, which they have here, uh, anything like that, I avoid those at all costs. So I think an iPad Mini to me is just gonna make. Well, wouldn't that make you either feel make you feel like you've got a giant iPhone or a really tiny iPad. So it depends on the perspective and your attitude. Well, I don't know. I measure everything with my penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I went for it. Well, I like that. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, I also wanted to give a shout out. I talked a little bit of, I've been into House of Cards and uh, oh, I saw yeah. that Cards Against Humanity did a set of cards. Oh, are you talking about political dicks being dicks to each other? That game or that movie or that show? Yes. Yes. Okay. Political dicks being dicks to each other, I think, is what they actually meant oh. to call it. I, I listen to that show. I'm a, I, I'm, a, I'm a bystander to that show as my wife watches it. I'm like, is there anyone on that show that's actually decent? No. And she's like, funny. no. She watches no. Well, she watches that show. She watches Betrayal or Revenge. She and then she Scandal. watches Scandal. Scandal. Yeah. And, yeah it, like, so it's, it's, it's dicks being dicks in political setting, <laughs> bitches being bitches in like a fucking rich <laughs> setting, and then something else. It's like, God, man, I'm the, I'm the one that's like rainy day Sundays, you know? Fuck. Or Mondays. Uh, Sundays can be rainy too. Now that show's pretty much just Kevin Spacey eating up the screen as much as possible, oh, yeah. and I'm 100% okay with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, so I thought it was weird that they did a set of Cards Against Humanity cards for House of Cards. That's and like uh, very actually got, specific. Yeah, it, it seemed yeah. all, all kinds of odd, but happy to report, I played with them last night. They're all really, really funny. And um, the, the white not cards... Are spoilery? Um, no, no, they're no? not. Because okay. they're so out of context. That was the, that was the thing uh, I was worried about, is uh, when you're playing with them um, and... The white cards, which are the important cards, which are your answer cards, like uh, they just work. They just sound like political cards. They just like one of them is my constituents. That was my favorite one because that's gotcha. just silly. Um, the the question cards are a little bit more specific. They actually like pull in character names from the show, which was kind of disappointing. But um, the white cards work really well, and and they also made fun of them. Just like I think one of the cards is twenty twenty five jokes about some stupid show or something like that. Like. They had fun with it. It seemed to be a really weird cross promotion thing. I didn't think it would work, but uh, I got a kick out of it. So, um, and I love Cards Against Humanity. So, we did that as a uh, a team building thing at work. I highly recommend it. Just don't invite your HR department. Yeah. Right. Huh. <laughs> uh, Jason, you're up for your your game, bitch. Oh my gosh. Let's see. Let me tune. Let let me tune and zone back into what I was thinking of last week. I was thinking of dinosaurs. I don't know why. Just hmm. dinosaurs. The show. You know <laughs> a good I, show. that that we can spin not off the of mama. That. Hey, wait, it, Jason. Not the mama. Is that what you're uh, thinking of? Yeah, okay. probably. Go ahead. Sorry. Did I do that? Dinosaurs and clothing. That could be another thing that I could layer into this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, just sold. EA. Just <laughs> million dollars. Damn it. I should have copyrighted that. <laughs> uh, um, now, just kind of like, you know, uh, you know, I've, I've, you know, when you go to museums, you see these, you know, giant skeletons of dinosaurs. And then, of course, mm -hmm. modern technology allows you to kind of 
see what they you know what, I got uh, really, what it looked like. I got really excited that you're going to a uh, museum that you're greeted by giant skeletons, like just you're like, welcome. Yes, the doors are giant skeletons. You've taken too much theraflu. Please go home. <laughs> <laughs> giant skeletons of dinosaurs go you know so just just the fact that you know they keep discovering all these like crazy things you know still mm-hmm. why couldn't you know why couldn't there be a game like that why couldn't there be a game where you can actually design your own and i know spore kind of yeah. was like that but, but you know this is this takes it to a whole nother level where you know you 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 know do everything including you know the skeletal frame of dinosaurs and then you pit them against each other like you put them in an actual you know scenario or environment in which they have to survive dino then, fighters exactly and then eventually i guess what end game would be asteroid pacific hit in the rim. Earth. oh what? pacific yeah. Rim. <laughs> exactly yeah, that yeah is even yeah absolutely <sighs> This is uh, this has got see like Spore was so disappointing in how it executed on its multiple phases but I think you're on to like you're on to something as far as the 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 all the ultimate dinosaur game. Yeah, well, you just, be, just milk it. I mean take what you just said but then add in like you know you've got your dinosaur your goal is to try to keep it alive and evolving and you've got humanity slowly starting to evolve and I mean just like what you said Justin like Pacific Rim eventually happens like that would be because the Pacific Rim game sucked uh, sport, you know, was okay in the beginning, and then it sucked. Let's, you know, get the best of both of them. I'm, I'm into this game mm-hmm. pretty much. Uh, can my dinosaur have tentacles? Yeah, whatever you want. Cool. S- science, Good. man. If science can make it work. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't want sci- I don't want any scientific dinosaurs. I want, I want bullshit dinosaurs. Yeah, I defeats. want dinosaurs with floating tentacles. I want them to float, and I want them to. Yeah, have telekinesis. So you do know well, there there is a game out there where you collect dinosaur bones. So we could this could all spawn off of the Animal Crossing universe. Is really what I'm getting at. I'm the only one that well, used in that. But you, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> well, and, and, <laughs> and I used to read these books. What was it like? Dinosaur was it? Dinosaur Brown. I can never. I cannot find you, the internet has not given me. That the sounds answer. like a black exploitation. <laughs> I was like, I think that's out of print. I, th- I hey, think. Hey, so brown. <laughs> Ooh, I'm, here to, I'm here to kick your ass. <laughs> I, I believe Michael like, J. White was in. No, a, what it was was basically was like, it was like this. This kid's, uh, I think, dad was like a paleontologist or something, and he always had these own like separate adventures and stuff. I don't know what it was. It was some series of books that I read as a kid. Oh, okay, yeah. I know. I think I know what you're did, talking about. Did he have like a? I don't, a, t- a top hat and a glasses. I were they picture books? I don't know. <laughs> oh, then I don't know what we're talking about. I don't. I don't know. But basically, he you know he, he, the he, would, dog. he he would get he would get he, he had a trench situation. coat and he was a dog. <laughs> 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 it's the same thing. You, wait, Justin, do you have a magical friend that had a top hat and glasses <laughs> and taught you about? Justin, come on, come on! Don't worry about going to school today, Justin. What, did he drive we a van? have dinosaur bones to find. <laughs> did you have a, did you drive a uh, undistinguished uh, large van with <laughs> vacuum equipment in the dinosaurs back? Dinosaurs can't drive vans. Ignore the wizards painted on the side of my van, Justin. It's filled with candy <laughs> and dinosaur bones. Oh, seriously. <laughs> I'm six, so happy the direction this is going. Justin would be fucked if he was approached by a stranger with candy and dinosaur bones. <laughs> yeah, he would be. He would be Justin. He would be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! What was your game? I don't even. Why get are there child molesters in your dinosaur game? I guess it's your new child molester simulator somehow. Oh, boy. I don't trust Dinosaur Brown at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. It's a terrible <laughs> show. Was it a show or was it a book? I don't know. Was it a book? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Woo. So Spore was that's, okay. That's, that's all yeah, I Spore was it. fine. <laughs> Perfectly fine. Uh, I don't think I ever played Spore not drunk. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so it's probably a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, they oh. need to do more with that. I mean, the that creature engine from that. But it actually was making awesome. But, yeah. but recreating dinosaurs and then 
you know, being able to make a society of your favorite dinosaurs to fight other alien dinosaurs that have tentacles. And and maybe even multiplayer it, you know? Once you create yours, you throw it into the fray and see, you know, how it how it does against others. Now would you have direct control or would you just kinda leave it leave it be? Well, I think once you you maybe both, maybe once you create it, it just kind of gets added to a you know a library that people can download into their own games. That way, you know, there's just this ongoing, you know, they're not having there's you know it's it's user based support for the game, I guess, rather than the creators going out there, you know, there's some sort of lottery that you throw your dinosaurs, not child molesters, into. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh man, out of context, that conversation went from oh. us. Yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> I like it though. I, I like this idea. I think, I think dinosaurs. Why? I, I talked a bit of, uh, a long, like three years ago. I wrote an article about the next enemy that needs to come into play, and I think dinosaurs I think need to be reintroduced. I think we're ready. I think we're ready for a flood of dinosaur. Like, give me the well, you know, a- the, you know, the the WB show. Was it? Is that or what's that? Sh- what's the WB now? The uh, the uh, CW. Is it the OC Network? The CW? CW um, Teenage Dinosaur Show, and then HBO's <laughs> version, and then all Thoughtful the Thoughtful Teenage Dinosaurs. <laughs> I can imagine it. It's got kind of a Gilmore Girls kind of edge to it, real fast yeah. talking, but that One Tree Hill drama. You I mean, don't take had, it like, seriously, but you kind of do. We've had like a decade of vampires. Let's have a decade yeah. of dinosaurs. It's time. We need, we need a dinosaur show that has incredible leaps of social logic. Yes. <laughs> and video games. That's really what I was getting. I think if it's popular enough for the mass consumption, we can get some really great dinosaur games. Mm, absolutely. I just really absolutely. want the Pacific Rim game that we deserve, too, that starts yeah. off like Spore. Yeah. So I can, you know, I'm hoping we get a good Godzilla game, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because that um, is shaping up to be looking pretty tight. I liked yeah. the Godzilla game back on the Super Nintendo. I played a lot of that. Did you ever play the Dreamcast one? Yeah, no. the Dreamcast one was pretty decent. I, I heard it was decent. Yeah. yeah. I think we all just want King of the Monsters. I think that's oh, what yeah. it all comes down to is another game like that. But well, you can only play Rampage so much. That's what oh, that's yeah. what the Mortal Kombat guys should do. Like, I don't want another Mortal Kombat, and I don't want another shoehorn DC fighting game give me some do some monsters yeah yeah do uh primal rage meets mortal Kombat meets king of the monsters that Ed wow Boone, get on it <laughs> that's I a just hi- really I, tight I just hijacked your game pitch that's what oh, the... right there. i'm okay You're... with that because we we took it places it should have never gone <laughs> like, I should have like a six-year-old justin <laughs> i need to apologize to my six-year-old self <laughs> you know, I had I had this little stuffed brontosaurus growing up, and I I feel like I needed I need to dig him out of the the basement and, and apologize to him. Wait, you have him buried in the basement? <laughs> you know, he's with all the kids. God. He's all with all the stuff that your parents still have from when you were a kid. Oh, so that... he's in he's in boxes, not like in the the no, earth. Like not... <laughs> okay, I was gonna say maybe Dinosaur Brown he is like the a the Dexter of, of child molesters. Instead of killing <laughs> serial killers, he just molests them when they're sick, so they don't do it anymore. <laughs> oh, man. oh gosh! Last joke. I'm sorry. Last it's joke. Okay. It's okay. Ethan Moses, what was the best video game decision you've made recently? Banished was the best mm-hmm. video game decision I have made. Um, so anybody that knows me knows that I love simulation games. Uh, I think I'm probably rivaled by uh, Mr. Jason here. Uh, yep. I think he and I have a pretty... Um, and I think he's more extreme than I am. Uh, but I love Towns last year. I love Towns, but I felt like at times Towns was a bit... Uh, it was a lot. It was a lot of, of uh, micromanaging, mm-hmm. and um, the, the challenge, I, I think I got to a point where I had the system down that it wasn't very challenging anymore. Banished introduces a whole different uh, kind of system. It's, it's, it, it feels like towns. There's a lot of like towns, except for the game will fuck you as soon as it wants to. Like, it's, <laughs> there's not, you know, there's yeah, not well. a comfort level. Like, with towns, you can kind of take your time and build up, and you should, can feel pretty good. Vanished, ah, ah, 
oh, you got you got your your your, your five families. You're getting everything pull, pulled together. You know, mommy and daddy are smiling like, oh, we got the hay. We got we got the wheat fields going. We're feeling good. Boom, tornado. Boom, cholera. Boom, syphilis. <laughs> Flames. All this shit. You're the only fucked. Th- the only thing about the game that makes you feel safe is the pause button, and then you realize you have to actually hit the play mm-hmm. button at some point, and then you're just terrified. And I found myself doing that more often than not. And so for just for anybody that has not heard of this game, it is a... I would say in my review I said it was it, it's a city builder. It is, it is a city builder, but it is mm-hmm. so much more about um, uh, uh, survival than that. I mean... You every decision you make can spell the end of your tiny community. Whereas in most city builders, I feel like your goal is you grow, you grow, you grow. Um, you know, you don't have to be really restrained on your growth because there's not anything that's going to uh, negatively impact you. Uh, now I haven't played the newest Sim City, but I remember, you know, in the old Sim City, as long as you kind of keep your tax revenue going, you're you're okay. In this game, more citizens is good because you can get more jobs done. But it also means you have to provide more food, more firewood. Um, you know, it introduces a possibility of disease. I mean, just a lot of stuff. So you're basically building. You're going from a tiny little small lit group, which is pretty easy to manage, to this very fragile machine. So currently, I've got a popular. I've got a, a town with 300 people, wow. and I'm constantly like, like every move could spell the end of everybody. And that's not even taken into consideration. I mean, that's just like my management skills. That's not taking into consideration a fire um, or I've been having a lot of disease outbreaks, which I've been able to manage for the most part Clean up um, or right? a tornado. I mean, I, I mean, but that, I mean, it's like, Oh my gosh, it's, it is one fucking guy made this. Yeah. Like this kind of shit pisses. Really? One guy made this yep. one dude made this. And it's, it's, the level of thought that went into a lot of the systems is insane. Like you'll play this game. And I think that, I mean, it's there's it's it's not an easy game. It's a complicated game. There's not a lot built around it. It has a lot of people have complained that like, oh, I saw the buildings within three hours. Seeing everything like in terms of like building everything is not the ultimate goal. Mm-hmm. It's building and building and and just stacking and just going from there. And one dude doing this like I. I, I don't I don't get it. I don't understand how people are that good at things like this. Like this is not a game that one person makes, you know? Yeah, and the thing about it too is that the fact that he, you know, basically waited until he thought the game was ready to release it to the world. That's what I was that I found really impressive because at first I was like, man, he's he's really just holding this, you know, tight to the chest and then he's gonna release it. But mm-hmm. I've been very satisfied uh, so far. One of the the really interesting things about the game, just for, for people to know, is that of course the, the the concept of the game is the fact that these are people that have decided to go out on their own. So it's you know colonial in that sense to where um, you have these you know small families. But the really funny thing is is that you can look at the 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 details of the people. You can you know know their gender, their names, and stuff. The oldest person in my starting group was eighteen. <laughs> and the fact that that person is the most old. likely not prepared for anything that you <laughs> into i find that just amazing the fact that that was a realistic you know situation in which people found themselves in like what is what is the age that people are considered adults in the game is it was it 12 13 i think it's 12 i i remember looking at one of my so you can look at the houses and you know, one of the, the ways to build people up is to build houses, and then when people are old enough, they'll move into the houses. And so I had a house with two 12-year-olds, and I was like, hmm, <laughs> oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't know about this. It's like camp nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> but then they had a kid. Uh, even, I think they probably had age since then, but I was like, what the fuck's going on here? But yeah, at, at 11, oh, you're good souls. to go. You're part of the yeah. You're part of the working community, um, but yeah, it's those little tiny details that make you feel like. And you can not only that, but I thought you were to say this, Jason, but you can like zoom into the town. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's like what? Like you don't. Yeah, you can, he you didn't can need to do that. People. Yeah, you didn't need to do that. This one man group who had his attention to eat. You didn't need. To, you don't have to zoom in and see someone brooming, but you can watch him actively doing. He has accomplished what SimCity claimed to be yeah. trying to do. Now, granted, SimCity, in a modern city, there's there's some more complicated aspects to it. However, 
in terms of the AI and how people function and how people develop jobs, they move from house to house depending on what jobs they're working at and where they're working and how all these resources are managed, it's pretty freaking intense. I mean, yeah. I don't know. People need to be knocking this dude's door. I mean, he's he, he's fine now. I mean, he's probably sold. I don't know. The game is doing really well. It's like one of the top yeah. games on Steam right now. But it's it's incredible, and it's so engrossing. And I've played for way too long this weekend. Like, it was just like, I was like, oh, shit. But you're always trying to get that population going, you know? And you can get to a point where you're doing well, and it screws you over. And so it's like, okay, you learn a little bit each time you play. And it's really, really satisfying. I mean, not satisfying like a roguelike, because a roguelike you kind of expect to die. I mean, it's still frustrating to die in this game. Like, it's like, oh, that sucks. But you're like, okay, I know what to do the next time. So, I mean, it's, I don't know, I'm... I'm super pumped about this. I, I, I look back at my review. I wanted to get something out because I had a lot to say about it before I got too analytical about it. But uh, I, I, I want to go back and keep writing about it. But I know people would be really annoyed by it. But uh, oh, it's, oh, it's great. Just find different aspects to write about. We've kind of headed down that path recently. I'd like to know uh-huh. the nuances of it. And again, like both of you get into these sims at a much deeper level than I can ever understand. Like I was going to say I need a Rosetta Stone to even be involved in this conversation uh, <laughs> these games are so intimidating for me but the yeah I, I'm interested to know what features jump out of you, out at you from this game compared to a game like Towns like why is this one hooking you differently than the others because to me I can't tell the difference between some of these games so it's interesting just to, to learn about the nuances uh, in the genre you know I find it really weird for me to say this is that towns you were dealing with survival, but you were also dealing with combat. You were dealing with you know uh, enemies attacking you and that kind of stuff. So you had a mul- you had multi fronts to look at, and it could get a little bit overwhelming at times. Um, Banished is only managing a town, and I think what attracts me to it so much is that we're so used in video games to be dealing with the fantastic when it comes to survival. You know, we're dealing with zombies. We're dealing with mummies, we're dealing with Frankensteins, <laughs> all manner of reanimated human bodies. And this game shows you how dangerous the, sh- the normal world is. I mean, and yeah. and to me, like, that's something, I, like, when I first saw the game and it was like, oh, there's not going to be any monsters, I was like, oh, I don't know. That's gonna, it seems like it's going to be kind of boring. But it's really not, because you almost feel like you can apply some real world knowledge to how you set things up. Yeah. For instance, how I set my town up is I thought, okay, so I know the tornadoes can happen. I know fires can happen. So instead of building everything around one small area and building out from there, which I do in most builder games, I thought I'm going to build one little area here, um, have some food you know, production, uh, have you know, just a little bit here, and then kind of expand and make hubs and eventually grow from that point because I know that if I get hit by a disaster – I'm going to be, I'll be able to recover with storage or whatnot, you know, because like if you have a barn full of supplies, like it's not like you put supplies away and it's in this big universal storage area. Like you can lose a whole barn full of supplies and it could be your food for the season. So those kind of things, you know, it, it's kind of interesting looking at that and think about like, you know, you can get nomads that come live with you um, eventually and to like kind of judge like is my town prepared for this population explosion because not only do they add to your population they can suddenly start producing so you can go from having you know 100 people to 150 people in no time and if you don't have the food production to deal with that then you're kind of screwed so it's kind of cool to see kind of some of the real world applications to this game and how uh, it kind of really makes you worried about overpopulation on our own earth because you're like when shit gets out of control, there's nothing you can do about it until Mother Nature's like, okay, it's time to swat you guys out, you know? So, uh, but yeah, that that's a definitely, and, and it's just a really tight package. Like, I haven't dealt with any bugs. I think production value, like, one thing about Towns was, you know, it was pretty simple in terms of the graphic graphical interface, and not that that's a big deal, but this, this is more pleasing to the eye. It's a very calming game, even though it's a very stressful game, and that seems mm-hmm. kind of counterintuitive, but that's definitely, like, the, the feel of it. I'm like, I could just watch my little people broom and, and, <laughs> and farm all day, you know? So it's just, it's cool to kind of be grounded, I think, is, is a big aspect of it, what I'm trying to get at with that. Yeah, yeah and, one of the, and one of the things that I really found uh, interesting that you said, Ethan, was the fact that you do kind of want to spread things out for other reasons. And the game almost makes you do that because, you know, there's other things like 
um, hunters' lodges and stuff like that that you have mm-hmm. to build out into the wilderness because obviously in order to hunt, you know, deer and stuff like that, it's not going to be in the middle of a open field. Yeah, they, they want you to put that kind of stuff in the middle of nowhere so that you know it's more effective that way. And I think that and that blew my mind. Yeah, that like, was really brilliant. <laughs> I was like, because you expect like in most games, you just put a resource gathering place and it, it, it collects it no matter what. This one. Yeah. Heavily, you know, there's you can get a, a gatherer's uh, a lodge, which people go out and they pick mushrooms and stuff, or an herbalist. Mm-hmm. They benefit from a thick forest, and yeah. so if you put a lodge that plants trees next to that, you have these combinations going. So I mean, there's layers on this that you just, I mean, and again, it's a real world application. <laughs> Where do you go hunting for deer? In a fucking forest. You don't hunt for them on a riverbank, you know? Right. And the other thing, too, about, you know, the storage barns and stuff is the fact that a lot of times your your citizens will pull out what they feel like they need and put it inside their houses. So you can look at the inventory of these individual buildings. And so a lot of times, you know, I, I have my fishermen over here, and I'm like, wait, where did all my fish go? And, I, and I'm like, okay, let me go look in all the houses. And all the little houses have their own separate random number of fish in their house. And I'm like, that's so brilliant. Mm-hmm. Because that's how the real world works. Like, not every house is going to have the exact equal amount of stuff. Like, they're all going to have their own different things based on their needs. Because you might have a house that has six people in it. And then, like Ethan said earlier, you might have a you know, house full of two 12-year-olds. So, you know, and they, <laughs> and they don't need as much stuff. But their stuff is going to be dependent on their jobs and their families. It's just, from so, the outside, the game looks very basic. But then when you start looking at everything, it's just so complicated and, and really, really cool. Can your town mature to the point where other people have finally take issue with two 12-year-olds living together? Well, they grow up, so... <laughs> yeah. They, 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 no, they, they kind of look away from that kind of stuff. They're kind of too concerned about <clears throat> other things going on at that point. But, I mean... It's about survival. Well, yeah, and, it, it, and it's just so weird not having an outside influence to... I mean, you're just dealing with your own people and... and there's no conflict or anything like that. It's just like, ah, oh, like shit's gonna happen to you. I really, shit's going to happen. I really hope I, that just the end game for this is some sort of just alien encounter. Yeah. Pacific Rim. Just, just, like, yeah, just to throw you <laughs> yeah. off your game. Like, but, that, um, I, I would be okay with that. And honestly, you know, with this game, I, I was really worried that it was going to be um, very uh, focused on a certain um, video game demographic. I feel like you two. This is a pretty yeah, I yeah. Feel, honestly I, I feel like if you have twenty dollars and you have just an interest in a very um different kind of game that is strategic and also layered mm-hmm. this i i think I it think, has a lot it has a lot for its audience i think it does and i think i think just about anybody can get something out of this game because of mm-hmm. the fact that um it also has tutorials that you can play before you actually get into the game okay. itself. So the game itself isn't a tutorial. There are separate scenarios in which you can play if you're concerned about you know jumping into the game that I found to be very effective. I was going to say, it looks like you you just started adding Banish to your Let's Play video yeah, list. Yeah, so I did, I did the very first tutorial, and then um, I decided to not sort of film the other three scenarios, mm-hmm. and, and I'm glad I didn't because they went by pretty quickly. And so, yeah, today I just put out my first video, and I'm just doing sort of 15 to 17 minute little scenarios cool. where, um, like Ethan said, you're just rushing and making sure that you know the next disaster isn't around the corner. And so, you know, Ethan, you can waste an entire afternoon and just kind of you know zone out in a good way mm-hmm. and, and just be very entertained, be very soothed. The, I think the music is is some uh, some of the best music I've heard in this this type of game. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I've heard the same song twice, but then, then again, maybe it's just so good that it's just background noise in a really good way. Mm-hmm. Ethan, I'm going to need you anytime Jason is doing a let's play of a game that you're playing at the same time. Can you create some sort of like Mystery Science 3000 <laughs> style video commentary of his let's play videos? <laughs> that would actually good. be that would actually be pretty funny. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. <clears throat> actually, wouldn't. With some of these, I watch these. I'm always really, and I wanted to do some for towns because I really got into towns. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I get really into a game like this, like, like for instance, I actually listed Banished as like the best and worst thing that happened to me this week because I played for ten hours on Sunday. I have not played a game wow. for ten hours straight for the longest time because I got into the zone. And when Jason does his videos, he does a good job of 
talking, you know, and explaining <laughs> what's happening, and and this is what I'm doing here, and this, and 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 I'll be like, oh, I'll begin like real strong, like, hey, everybody, let's get into it, and then I'll be like, okay, and I built a house, and then, wait a second, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, yeah, I'll get I mean, you know I, what I mean? I feel like. You know the the old micro machine commercials with the guy at the end. He's talking really fast. And you can't really understand what he's saying, but he's doing it like this. I feel like that's who I am playing this game because it goes by so fast, and you are mm-hmm. just so concerned the whole time. It oh, just yeah. sucks you in. And then I look over because I record my commentary separately, and thank goodness there's a there's a timer on that thing because I. Just like Ethan, I could I could easily just play this thing for ten hours and be like, this is going to be a bitch to edit later on. <laughs> so you know, luckily I just I'm able to sort of keep track so far because um, this is a game where I'm going to have my my LP uh, map and then I'm going to have my own personal little zone out mm-hmm. situation where no one's ever going to see it. It's just me and banished, and that's and that's going to definitely happen because it's only going to help make my videos more entertaining because. I'm going to be able to anticipate scenarios in which I can hopefully educate people and entertain them at the same time. Cool. But yeah, I just I just feel like that 15 minutes blows by so fast, and I'm just like, did we do anything in this mm-hmm. episode? And yeah. and then I go back and watch it. And I'm like, yeah, we did so much. And so um, from that perspective, it's it's an entertaining game for because you want to play games that you enjoy. You don't want to just record stuff because it's work you know and some games are like that whereas so yeah. far this game I'm just it moves by so fast that I don't even care mm-hmm. so yeah it, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the the comments that I get from people because um, it's this game is a lot like timber and stone um, in a sense that you're building something and you're trying to keep your people alive um, I think it zooms out just a little bit more because in timber and stone you you get a little, little bit attached to the individual characters Whereas this one, I feel like you're not necessarily attached to the family so much until oh, they those, die. No, it's because those twelve year olds are living in sin, so fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they grow up in like three years and yeah. they, they pass yeah. away, and you see a little, you know, oh, D- Jody died. And you're like, Jody just was born. What the hell is going on? And it says old age, and like, yeah. let's yeah. get so, sad. So yeah, it just you know, it's it it's a lot like other games, but it has a lot of other interesting things going on for it. Cool. So I'm really uh, curious to see how well it does, and maybe see you know um, if it how's, gets um, further development. How's the developer like? What type of presence has he had? Like I, I the he fact that it's blogs, developed by one dude, like well he he blogged for a long period before the game was released, and so. You he gave he like actually put like code on his website like oh, this wow. is exactly how I'm coding this game, which I thought was you know it was a little over my head but yeah. he was really explaining sort of like oh today I you know completely redid the whole you know GUI because it just didn't make any logical sense in the way the game is now playing because I did this one little thing and it changed the whole dynamic of the game so he's he's been pretty well connected I think publicly. Cool. Um, yeah, this game came with, out of nowhere for me, and just it was kind of neat to see both of you as excited. Yeah, as you I don't even know how I, I don't even know how I caught wind of it. I just kind of started following the the progress on Twitter, and and then yeah. it went from there. Yeah, I feel I, like Rocket Rock, Shotgun had a feature on it last yeah. year, and it looked cool, and I went from there. But you know, my only big concern is with these one man, two man teams is <clears throat> the uh, ferocity of of the gaming community, and and just yeah. hoping that he's equipped. To, you know, for the next two weeks is going to be in it, like just really trying to. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of people well, complain about bugs it, or anything like that. Is it but, early access? Uh, no, oh, yeah. no. Then this, he he didn't he, know. He, he didn't literally know was like, "I'm not going to release this game until I think it's yeah." Completed. Yeah, he doesn't owe anybody anything else. Then, like, that's I well. Like, I mean, like, there's always going to be bugs and like patches yeah. and that kind of stuff that needs to happen. I'm just hoping that it's not going to yeah. be a thing yeah. where because uh, there's you know we know how everything yeah. is nowadays. So, but um, but no, I if if you like this kind of game, go support this dude. I yeah, cool. It's awesome. Great game. Um, changing gears a little bit. My my best. Uh, I don't want to talk about my actual best, but go play The Last of Us Left Behind DLC. I can't talk about it without spoiling stuff, so I'm not going to attempt. Yeah. I've got my game through videos are going up all week. Um, it's a five parter, turns out, and then uh, sometime this week, Aaron's review is going to be pop popping up. So, well, plan to say about Left Behind. It's it's phenomenal. It's great. I so. will I will say I have not played the you know the original. I guess if you'd call it that. <laughs> um, 
and I have not watched much playthrough of it. I, I, I watched maybe the first 30 to 40 minutes of it, and I know obviously it goes other places, so I know a few details, but I've actively been watching and paying attention to the DLC, and I must say it is fantastic. It's, it's so I, cool. It's, it, makes me, it makes me want to go play the original. So Yeah, I really it, do. It is yeah. so... It's so well done in regards to this is how you should handle story related DLC for a story like a a game that is completely story driven. They yeah. they fit it in brilliantly and anyway and also has some of the best action scenes in the series. So, but oh, wow. with that in mind, um, uh, my my other best decision was that I stuck with Strider because I've been playing that all weekend. I'm just about to finish it up, um, and first of all, when Strider was announced. Uh, people wanted to make it the next Shadow Complex, and I was like, "Whoa, let's let's slow down here. We just have some screenshots, and you know, who's this Capcom's? They can fall on their face. I'm not impressed by this game. Turns out, uh, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good action adventure game. And uh, while I still think it it could be much more awesome if it, and I'll I'll talk about that later. Um, it after about the midway point, I started getting all the abilities and the character and the action started becoming really, really fun. It's kind of one of those, it was a, much more of a slow burn at the beginning than I expected, but once your cyber ninja has all of his abilities and you're darting around the screen super fast and um, killing multiple guys, it becomes really stylish, really fun, and um, I can't wait to finish it. It's It's been a nice surprise. I thought the game would, I thought the game would suck. So, um, I don't think it's, you know, in, in that genre, which is one of my favorite genres, the Metroidvania games, it's not not one of the best, but it's pretty damn good. Yeah. That's, that's good for a rebootish type game. Mm -hmm. It seems like a lot of people are just kind of calling those in. So that's a... Uh, it, it seemed like a lot of people were surprised about that game. Mm -hmm. I never had it, like... Uh, I mean, Strider... It's one of those kind of franchise games that I, I missed, I guess. You know, like it just, I don't know, it, it didn't resonate with me. It was almost like a B-level, yeah. not, not that it was no, a B-level in terms of production, but you know. It. Oh, yeah. So I, I was, I'm always surprised about those kind of things. Did they ever have another, I feel like there was another Strider that came out for so, one of the, the big the, Xbox or something like that. No, yeah, not they haven't had a recent one, I don't think. Okay. Uh, there was, um, shit, there, there's a game out there called something else that maybe based Spiritual on the Strider manga yeah. or like they... Like they look like those types of ninjas. I forget the name of it, but it's like a really hard multiplayer game. Um, yeah, Moon something maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I really liked how the character moves. Like, there's so many little rough edges around it. Like the characters are just really stereotypical. Like the Strider character himself has no personality. But when you're just relaxing and playing and exploring, I it it's fun. And um, oh, who cares? Yeah. Um, and I think. For being a fifteen dollar game, it's kind of the perfect package. And I, you know, you look at this kind of thing: is is Capcom testing the waters? See if they need to do a bigger budget Strider. I kind of hope they don't. Kind of, they just. I want more of these from their back catalog. Like, do do a, a, effective <clears throat> updates of what you have, Capcom. I've I've come to the. Uh, I, I begin to think that there's a lot of franchises that I think we're probably ready to vary in terms of triple a productions but i think there's nothing wrong with revisiting um the chip games and, and keeping rangers. them oh. well <laughs> actually i wanted to have a chippendales rescue rangers that that mimicked true detective um in a way um but uh, <laughs> i haven't that's, watched that's that show another, yet but that's awesome that's oh, another man. story I've, I've just heard about it i haven't even seen it either but i was like oh could you imagine like a really gritty <laughs> chippendale that's... You know, like the theme song, like remix the theme song, like some real. Oh man, that could be tight. Yeah, um, but no, I think show, it's, that's pretty jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think that I, I think games like this are like I, I think it's okay for for I think Nintendo does yeah. this very well, and that they're not trying to change the original games. Whereas you have some people are like, oh, this is a character people recognize. That's like. Give it the, the sheen of coat that, that we expect in this I mean, generation. I think some games aren't going to be able to translate to that. I, I think there's wish, a lot of like that. Like I said, Strider is so bite-sized. It's It kind of just fits in perfectly as a complimentary game to whatever big thing I'm into. And mm -hmm. when I look at, like, I haven't played the new Donkey Kong, the Tropical Freeze, but, you know, full-price game. Who knows how long they spent developing it? Probably two to three years. 
Nintendo's putting all their budget behind. I'm sure it's a great Nintendo game, but like if I could get every year and a half these little, you know, four mm-hmm. to, four to five hour bite sized adventures that are are just what I expect, I I'd, I'd play yeah. a ton of those games. Like absolutely. Um, yeah, because I just went in there with no expectations. So the fact that it's not doing certain things great doesn't bother me. Like the fact that every character that has a voice in that game annoys the shit out of me doesn't actually mm-hmm. bother me. I just think it's kind yeah. of funny because yeah. <laughs> his cyber s- plasma sword thing is so cool. So no. yeah, yeah. Pleasant, pleasantly surprised with that. Jason, what was your best decision? You know, uh, I've just been really getting back into Starbound quite a bit. I actually started a character a couple weeks ago um, based off of Guile from uh, Street Fighter. Okay. Because I was because I was <laughs> randomly ge- generating characters. Makes sense. Yeah. And um, this character, it, he had a, a a green green tank top, like brown pants, and then the the yellow hair. And I was like, "You've got to be kidding me! That looks exactly like Guile." And I was like, "All right, we're recording this." So, <laughs> So I've uh, I've started that, and um, uh, you know recently they've been sort of talking about you know the the fact that you know they've gotten the game to the point now where they can really just start having fun with it. Like they can really start developing things that are more focused on the actual like story of the game because essentially right now it's just kind of like open world. You can just jump around and stuff. Um, there are certain like bosses that you can fight, but. At this point now, they're really starting to focus on your individual character in terms of you know getting them from point A to point B, and sort of you know there's there there will be sort of open worldness to it, but also they're they're able to now sort of focus on the storyline aspect of the game. And um, I always forget that this game is still very early in development because mm-hmm. it just runs so well mm-hmm. that I'm like, oh yeah, there's still like a ton of stuff that I have no idea about. And then, of course, they, like, shoot out these huge blog posts and, like, this huge list of stuff that they're working on. And you're just like, is this, you know, this is the new, this is the new Minecraft. Like, this is a game that I feel like will never stop ceasing to exist in a, in yeah. a certain way. And I'm well, okay no. with that. I love it. I'm just like, I, because essentially I'm going to get tired of this character. And then guess what? I can start a brand new character and have a totally different experience. I could do that now. I could do that right now. I have two separate characters and have two completely different experiences and that's just amazing. You're running around with multiple characters having various experiences like almost um, you know throwing caution to the wind. I'm scared to death to put any time any more time into this game because they might erase that time. From well, they have they basically have said that everything but what, what was the one thing that they say might change in the near future because essentially everything in your ship, like if you have stuff in your ship, they say as long as you back that file up, you should be okay. Okay, it's the worlds and stuff that might change a little bit. Yeah, so okay. I know that, they're, that, done, that they're, one still, big... they're done deleting characters, and then somebody was saying they had a glitch a couple weeks ago where they yeah, actually deleted your, stuff your, on your ship. Well, your ship locker, if you tried to, I if you tried to open it, mm-hmm. it was it like emptied it out um, because I have like multiple chests outside of my ship locker and I like would go to open it and then the game would just like not respond forever. That's and terrifying. So, and then, but then I like the next day I read that and I was just like, no. <laughs> and then of course their 428 megabyte update came in and <laughs> fixed everything. Okay, so that is one thing that I'm not looking forward to. I will say because they're like, Oh yeah, we'll be able to update this pretty much daily. Is that the fact that there's a 400 some odd that megabyte big, that big every yeah. time? That's every shame. time, mm-hmm. every yeah. time. And, and luckily, I have really good internet here at uh, at the house. But it's just yeah. kind of like, really, like that's your update has to be that big every time. I mean, I'm okay with it because right now it hasn't broken or messed up any of my gameplay. But I'm just kind of like, hmm, that's it's going to be weird getting used to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there I'm not, you know, I'm sure I'm in the minority in terms of the masses having, you know, internet access. Um I, I don't think everyone is is as fortunate as I am. So that might be a, a frustration in the uh in the future. But I'm just, you know, week by week I just keep reading stuff and I'm just like, yeah, I'm I'm digging what they're doing with this game. And yeah. I so far I have not run into anything where I'm like, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play this anymore. No, I've got. Mm-hmm. I, I got to be careful because I want to get back to it. I really enjoyed it um, over the holidays when I was playing it, and uh, but I need to, I need to find something to hook onto as my green light that it's 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 good to come back. And I don't I don't. 
if I don't make that, I won't come back. It's it, yeah. Really weird that way. You do. I, 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 you do kind of have to just be okay with not, you know, getting that attached to something. Like mm-hmm. it is. It is a little terrifying, just like working towards something. But at the same time, you just have to know that this game is is going to have another point in which it it might be best to cleanse the palate. I think. Yeah. So. Well, and I, and, I, and that's one of the reasons why I kind of I backed off a bit because I played a lot initially, but I think that it's it's kind of um I li- I still enjoy it, but I'm waiting for the quest system that they yeah. have announced. Okay. I mean, there's a quest system, but there's also a progression system they've announced where I'm waiting for the they're quest trying system officially. Okay. I mean, well, well, I mean the quest system is one thing, which I that's what I was waiting for, but there's something else yeah. i mean you're be able to, you can live life as a farmer you can live yeah. life as a real estate developer you can live life as a someone that adventures and, and goes spelunking you can live like life spelunking. as a like monster killer i mean like yeah they're they're building it out and you can gain experience or you can gain um not experience mm-hmm. but um uh pixels it's and pixels, that kind of stuff yeah. from that and that's your progression from that point which the progression system at this point is pretty it, it's it's not bad but it's just pretty standard i mean yeah. you just you earn stuff and you move on from there but it, it sounds like the game we have now is i mean content is there uh, the systems are there but i mean holy cow like i can't imagine them in com- combination with the mod community like yeah, th- I mean, this is is, and I think this is even more um, less of a uh, it, like Minecraft was huge, and a lot of people got into this. But I think Starbound is even more friendly because a lot of people's issues with with Minecraft early on is yeah, that there's aspects of you know like combat and stuff that were missing. And if you like to build and you really like to get, uh, I feel like Minecraft was my anal retentive game. That was a game that I went in there and I, I just made sure everything looked perfect. Starbound, I feel a little bit more free and flexible with what I do in, in terms of that game. Cause, Not cause, that one's because better than the other, but... If you fuck up a planet, you can just move to another one. Oh, yeah, yeah which, exactly, which Starbound is, is awesome. Me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that, yeah, and and, and there's gonna oh, and the I mean, the events that they have, like the a meteor showers and all that kind of. I mean, mm-hmm. the game is just ah, oh, it's too, it's too robust almost. Yeah. It makes it makes a lot of other games look bad. I mean, talking about banished and then this, I mean, it does. It makes a lot of other games yeah. look kind of like really you didn't take the extra inch in that. So I mean, yeah. And the other thing about this game too is I have not actually yet to play it in multiplayer. Oh. And that idea, yeah, I haven't either. That idea kind of terrifies me. The fact yeah. that that exists and there, that that whole world is out there that I could easily get involved in. <laughs> and the, that's a good thing and a bad thing. I was gonna say you're yeah. still on our multiplayer se- server on Minecraft, so well, yeah, real trouble. I just, I just, I pop in the, the Minecraft server every once in a while, just write cuss words in stone. So <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Those are things I do. What about your worst decision, Jason? Well, a couple of days ago, I purchased the Humble Bundle 11, and I got really excited about it when it first came out because it had guacamole, mm-hmm. it had dust, which I have, you know, just sort of like, hmm, I might want to play that. The the platformer, uh, the Elysian Tale. Yes. Or, okay. Yeah, because there's there's still that weird weird caveman Ubisoft. Yeah. Game, no. This. So. Yeah. The Elysian Tale. You know, I've I've only heard good things about it. Uh, Gianna Sisters, which I don't know a whole right. lot about. Yeah. Um, the Swapper, which is oh. awesome. Um, those are the the standard games like pay that what sounds you like want. a terrible decision. Yeah, I know. Well, guess what? Today they added Fez to the mix. Oh yeah, your nemesis. <laughs> Damn you, Phil Fish. So give me, give me my money back, charities. <laughs> it's like, can I pay everyone but Phil? <laughs> um, Where's that slider? Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> can I pay the rest of the team at Polytron, but not Phil? Yeah, but it all. <laughs> so slider? I paid above. I paid above the average, so I also got Antichamber, which is, you know, a mind, you know what. Um, Monaco was also thrown in there, and then nice. today they added Fez, uh, awesome. Starseed, Starseed Pilgrim, and then Beat Buddy. So I think I, this is I think this I is have one videos of the strongest ninety percent of those games. Yeah, <laughs> this is one of the channel. <laughs> and, and some and somehow I don't have I didn't have any of those games, which is pretty cool. So you know so I, you I feel really like I'm getting hold there. my pl- my playthroughs in high regard, is what you're telling me. Well, I, that's how I know about most of the games. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, there, there's something there. But yeah, I, I just saw that. And I was just like, so you said you paid, little, uh, you paid more than the average. So you got that, you got those games, and then Phil Fish got a blowjob from your money, right? That's how that works. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Just you know that you made him a happy, happy man. 
I wonder what Phil. Oh, he'll never be a happy man. Oh, he'll and, I, and I think it also there's a, a tiny stipulation that you get Fez two for free, but it'll never <laughs> be released. So we all we all already have Fez two. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's just that YouTube video. Ah. It was the YouTube video, and then it was a social media experiment. That was the game. Oh, I didn't. You just didn't know that you were participating. <laughs> Wasn't very fun. No. Uh, okay. But that you know that's more. It's it totally it's totally worth it. Go yeah. out and buy it. But then I just saw that today and I it kind of left a little bit of a sour taste. I'm always surprised they can they can bundle together, you know, another I, yeah. another great list. I was like, oh, there's no way they're topping topping well, that bundle. You know, they came up with those first five, and then they were like, you know what, we still have plenty of days to go. We're gonna probably add some stuff in there. Yeah. And then today they did it, and there's still what six days I think left to go on it. So they might add more games. Who knows? I don't know. But I was yeah. very glad I got in the early. Uh, there's Gears of War that, for so. Linux. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, From you know, I've, I've got, it's just adding and adding and adding to the list of games that I will probably barely touch because, well, I've already got other stuff like Banished and Starbound <laughs> occupying most of my time. No. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't wait for the random batch of games that derails you from all that stuff. I don't know why. I'm not cheering against your YouTube channel by any means, but. Uh, kind of. You kind of I, are. Yeah. You know, I, kind I, of I guess I'm a big. <laughs> I'm a big supporter, obviously, from my library of people just playing a wide variety of games, and so I will always that I will always put that peer pressure on people. It's like, hey, have you tried? You know, you like this. You know, have you tried? Uh, have you tried this game? Because you should buy it. Because I bought it, and I need friends. <laughs> Don't ever Aww. listen to me when it comes to game purchase decision. That's why I made this website for people to yeah for me to mislead people. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, I had a big live streaming mistake last week. I think, gosh, when did I do that? I want to say it was after the podcast. I tried to do it before the podcast, but Steam was down. Um, yeah, it was last Tuesday. Yeah, streaming, streaming shmups takes a certain type of gamer uh, that I am not, which is I'm not good at shmups. I enjoy them from the... Um, the, like the witness side of things like that's 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 pretty cool it takes a lot of skill to do i don't have any skill um but i've always really liked ikaruga and that came out on pc i play that back on the gamecube and really got into it and uh, we're actually playing it for our arcade challenge at the office this week so that'll be interesting but i, I so i decided to live stream the, my first session with it in how many years and it couldn't have been entertaining. One, I was terrible. And two, I could not process how to play the game. I had forgotten how to play the game. And then three, because of that, I was like almost dead silent while playing the game because I'm trying to figure it out and there's so much going on on screen. I was like, this is possibly the worst thing to <laughs> put live for people to consume. So I apologize for that. And uh, yeah, that game, a after a few days with it this week, I finally remembered how, how to play it. But you... You have to getting into the Zen of Ikaruga takes takes a while. It is well, and that's and that's the challenge of streaming things or recording things. You know, a lot of times it's like, okay, do I play it beforehand just to get a feel for it, or do I just jump right into it to make it seem exciting? And right. and so they're right there where I am from the very beginning. Th th that decision as, as a streamer and a you know LP is is it's not an easy one. So I I, mean, I, I always I side on the I like to capture the experience of. You're going to witness this along with me. You're going to experience right. it along with me. So I'm not afraid to make a fool of myself, but it was just like I played a round and a half, and I was like, this has got to be unwatchable because, mm. <laughs> like, let me re – I'll, I'll report back in after I've played this five or six more times. But uh, that game is still – though, when it comes down to it, the nuts and bolts of that game, it is so tightly designed. Like, everything goes together so well. The whole, you know, the whole polarity gameplay aspect of it is – uh, still as beautiful and as addicting as ever. So we've been having a lot of fun with this week. I'll I'll write something up on it, but um, I apologize for attempting to live stream that. I was in over. I was in beyond my depth for sure. <laughs> well, your ratio to good to good and bad is probably still pretty good. Okay, so. good. <laughs> it's like the opposite of my KD ratio in any shooter I've live streamed. Um, <laughs> Ethan, what was your worst decision besides? Uh, I was going to say, uh, my worst decision wasn't really a bad decision as much as it was a decision that led me down a rabbit hole of sorts in terms of game. It was the decision to invest time in two games that involve a lot of clicking and collecting of items and just uh, general looting. 
Um, I spent a lot of time with Diablo 3 and Crater in, over the last three weeks, and uh, it, it, it put me in a really weird mind frame, kind of this really weird obsessive kind of like, I don't know, it was just really weird, and I don't always like to get into those frames of mind because it kind of distracts from everything else, and it kind of, not that I feel like that I would ever have issues with video game addiction, but you realize that you just spent five hours doing little to nothing. You're just kind of clicking and collecting items and going from there. Um, because I'm somewhat excited for the new Diablo 3 expansion. Um, you know, revisiting that game, I realized it was a lot tighter game than a lot of people gave it credit for. Um, and uh, I was like, oh, I got to build my guy up and, you know, make sure he's prepared for the expansion. And, <laughs> and I just kept building him and I built it and I built him and I built him. And I was like, oh, what am I doing here? And so I was like, well, I need to play a game, you know, more story to it or whatnot. But I was too intimidated to jump into one of the other mini games I didn't went to. So I was like, oh, Crater, I haven't played that for a really long time. I enjoyed that. But again, that game is not really story driven as much as it's about killing a lot of things, clicking and doing that kind of stuff. So it, it was just kind of weird to get into that. And I, and I was kind of uh, uh, glad to get into uh, Banished uh, because not that that's a game that, I don't know, there was just more thought process. I don't feel like I was in this, like, weird, like, click, 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 all, you know, because sometimes I feel dirty doing that for too long. I don't know if, if you guys yeah. feel the same way, but, like, yeah. when I really got into Path of Exile there for a while, I was kind of yeah, like, you know, up, this is you, really fun, a great game, but... You come up from those long sessions, and, I don't know, there's something about that genre for me that, uh, especially now, I'm like, what have I been doing all day? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like I love exactly. them. Yeah. Like I love those games, but I just I have to be careful Especially because when you're I, replaying it. Like when you're well, actually yeah. it, it's fine when you're consuming story content along the way and seeing new stuff, but like mm -hmm. when you realize, no, I'm grinding for armor or grinding for an yeah. item, a random item especially. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, two and a half hours. Um it yeah. felt good while I was doing it. Yeah. But uh what just happened? Um Yeah. Exactly. So, so I'm like, I, I feel pretty good waiting till. I, I'm excited uh, about the uh, the adventure mode stuff that they've been talking about. Oh well, yeah, and so. I want and I want to wait till Loot 2.0 comes out. Yep. If I'm going to get into it, but I, I think will, more than anything, I'm going to wait till the expansion does. Yep. I will. I will. I will be there with you for sure. And hopefully, yeah. we have better connection issues on day one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I doubt it though. Yeah, probably. Uh, what are you excited about though, Ethan? Let's let's go. Uh, good stuff. So. Every, uh, so, and I wrote an article about this today, uh, about Call of Duty Ghost, and every year I say <laughs> I'm not going to buy the next Call of Duty, and every year I buy the next Call of Duty as soon as it goes on sale. And I just want to say that um, I, I think I, I still am not um, going to you know, go back on my comment that you know this was probably the last time that a Call of Duty uh, game can come out with being basically as redundant because this game is quite redundant. The package is redundant. It's basically, you know, it's, it's black ops, but, uh, instead of a zombie mode, there's an alien mode, you know, and instead of a, you know, a, uh, a story that spans t a bunch of time, it's, you know, just focused on some characters, but is holy it? shit, if those games don't always, always offer something that very few games can, and that is just a very, just intense, fun ride it was fun the whole it way i'm sorry it is a ride it, and that's what it is it's it's not i didn't expect much going into it i felt like the price i paid for it if i want to jump in the multiplayer sure if i want to play the the alien game which looks intriguing great um but i love those storylines i i like it when a bunch of soldiers get together as as buddies as bros and just Take it to the bad guy. It's funny because the storyline is exactly the same every single game. There is the bro team. There is the bad guys who are always, always a different country. And it's usually Russian or, in this game, Spanish-speaking peoples. Oh, all of them. Evil. It's not just all of them. It's evil. not just one group. Yeah, it's it's federation. It's a, basically a federation of Spanish-speaking individuals. So all of those countries came together Jeez. to fight against the states. Boy, and it's always mall. the same thing. It's always the same thing, but man, I just love those you know sections where people like things are exploding and you don't have to put that much thought into it, but you're also like being stimulated. Like whereas I feel like you know I just talked about Diablo three and and Crater being you know you're you're stimulated purely by the clicking. This game, it's like oh there's an explosion, there's all this stuff happening, and and I just loved it. It was a great ride. Um, I'm uh, 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, yeah, yeah, okay, I did. Cool. I did today. <laughs> yeah, I kind of tore through it because they're always really, really engaging. I don't. I don't know. It, it is. It's just. It's very. There's very <laughs> few games that can match those games in terms of how much crazy bullshit they're throwing at you the so, whole time. You know, they, they, you know, other than Gears of War three is without a doubt the game that threw the most <laughs> crazy bullshit at you in this you know shorter span of time. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just I I, I those so, games are great. Um, I don't even want to call them guilty pleasures because I don't feel guilty playing them. Yeah. I think there's there's it's a lot bad, of people that praise give... those games too much, and there's a lot of people that are too hipster about it. You know, it's too bad they won't give you just the fifteen dollars single player on day one because I think well, you really and appreciate it. it. You download two. Di- I mean, on Steam, you download two different files. I don't know why. I mean, that would be a great <laughs> like that would show that that would that would show that Activision so, kind of like does if, sort of care about their customers because they don't give off any impression. If they, they could do. um acknowledge that, and then I kind of wanted, you know, I Ghost Ghost didn't get railed by any means, but I also didn't see anybody talking positives about it. So it's kind of nice Mm-mm. to hear you you're still hear that you still enjoy the campaign. Um, and then, uh, but I kind of wanted Activision and um, whoever was uh, this is an Infinity Award game, right? Um, mm-hmm. Them to kind of say, "Hey guys, I know we're not the only ones doing this, but this might be not a a step forward, but just a an, another step for Call of Duty." But can you realize how many platforms we're releasing this on? And you know, hey, we're giving you dogs. Like it was mm-hmm. just kind of <laughs> don't pretend Wait. that you were going to make the next world the earth shattering Call of Duty game. Have some sort of uh, they kill it? themselves with that campaign. They they put too much effort. <laughs> in, the game looks like cr- I mean the game looks like crap. It doesn't look good. I mean there are texture <laughs> issues at times. I mean it doesn't look like it looks good, but yeah, like yeah. based on I mean I just played Metro Last Light. That game is gorgeous. That is a and that's not a next generation game even. This game doesn't look good. When they start talking about this game's the engine being different, it wasn't different. It was refined. They put too much buzz into it. What they should have done is come out at last E3 and said, look, it's the same Call of Duty. The people that always buy it, you're going to like it. You're going to have a good time with it. New customers will fuck you. You're not going to buy it. You're going to bitch about it on Reddit anyway, so we don't even care. Yeah. Go with it and start planning for the next, whatever you're going to do next, which I don't even know what they're going to do next. Like, or, I, I can't or... <laughs> imagine them doing something. I, I'm sure I'll buy it. I'll say I won't, but I will. But, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, it's weird. That was, that, that campaign was just a bunch of bullshit. You know, it was like the guy, you know, that it, it felt to me like that campaign was the guy you always loan money to that always says he's going to pay you back and he never does, but he's <laughs> such a good bullshitter, you know? Yeah. And so that's kind of how this, this kind of felt to me. And, like and the season review. pass is ridiculous, you know? Um, but, but I, I like this, like I like Resident Evil six, maybe that's a better way to, to okay. phrase it is no, why no, I refused no. to review that with the score was because I could not explain Technically, the game's not great. It's not a step forward, but it's still... I felt good about it, which was, is why um, we decide numbers suck, essentially. I was curious because I couldn't get through the Black Ops 2 campaign because of the little random strategy stuff, the, the I don't know, the squad management things that they mm-hmm. threw in there. I just fuck that because I came here for target practice and the dumb, yeah. dumb action movie story, and you got in my way. Is anything getting in the way for the campaign? No. Because? Okay. Nothing. <laughs> so actually, it, it, I don't know if they could have stripped anything more from it. I mean, okay, it is. Good. It does feel like you have a little I bit just more roll, of roller coaster with guns. That's really. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, that that kind of threw me off too. And I didn't like the like the time period change in that game either. This game is just here's All your guys. Right. They're gonna right. fuck some stuff up. And there's a dog. And the dog's cool. The dog does some badass He's your stuff. Buddy. I like. He those. is your buddy. Yeah. Jason, what was what are you excited about? Well, this week they actually released a lot of uh, articles about the new Wolfenstein game. Yeah, which, that came out of nowhere again. Yeah, which, well, I was just kind of like, okay, you know, there's a new Wolfenstein game, and then it was just like, boosh, content. And I was just like, no, I want this game right now. Because I just, I, I heard about it, I was like, this is, this sounds, you know, epic. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, well, I could nonsense. not stop reading the stories, the articles, and there's just a lot of details in there that I'm just like, why am I still reading this stuff? <laughs> I'm going to buy the game. Like, I'm going to buy it when it comes out. Like, just stop reading. Save something special. I had no idea that there were going to be sort of like horror elements in this game. Yeah. I thought it was just going to be your traditional Nazi shoot 'em upper. 
but I then mean, they were like, oh, no, like there's that little well, occult side of it. Yeah, but this just definitely the little the little snippets that I've read. I'm kind of like, oh yeah, they're they're doing something a little different here. That's gonna really start, you know, it's gonna mess with your head. It's not gonna just be like, oh, that's 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 kind of crazy. Like, uh, apparently, some of the stuff that these people have have seen and played messed with them. And I'm just like, yep, I'm 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 okay with this. So, um, I I had to like reluctantly pull back from reading as much content as possible this week because I was just like, yeah, uh, they've, they've got my money. So I read, um, a really negative preview about it on destructoid. That just sounds like to the point where, okay, destructor, you're not allowed to review the game now because you've already kind of laid out that you are ready to destroy this game. And I'm like, yeah. I, ever since they announced this game, yeah, there was a little bit of, Oh, do we, re- do we need another Wolfenstein game? But I was like, it's fucking it's robot Nazis. Like this right. is big dumb fun waiting to happen. And if you want it to be more, I don't know what Wolfenstein game you're looking back on with like Right. Something it's not like, like the it's well, not like the original the puzzle game, the black and white puzzle game, Justin. <laughs> that deals with uh, LGBT issues and uh divorce. That's what uh, they want. Yeah. Yeah. Some people you know, try way too hard on these kind of things. I I even said, oh, I don't, I don't. Do I need another Wolfenstein game? No, but it's not gonna kill anybody. Yeah, right. like it's well, fine. It, it was, my reaction to this is way better than when they were like, "We're gonna make a Rise of the Triad game." I was just kind of like, "Really?" That was silly. Whereas yeah. when I heard Wolfenstein, I was like, "All right." And then I started reading into what they were gonna do, and I was like, "Okay." And then now the new news this week, and I'm just like, "Yup," like <laughs> I, this is the game I want because that's cool. What, what they're what they're doing is that they're they're they are starting sort of in the World War II time frame, but then they're jumping ahead, mm. like what 13, 14 oh, years, yeah. and so you know who knows what the Nazis have done in that that aspect of time. I you know, can't that's, wait to find out. That's exactly what they've done. They've they've hooked me in that case. I'm just like, <laughs> damn you, and your awesome previews, and yeah, they. It's just like you know, I I I I like the original, but I already love this one. And I hate saying that, but it's just like I, I love what they're doing with it, and I hope I'm not disappointed. So I'd well, love- you won't be because you get access to the next Doom game. You're right. That's the other thing. I totally forgot yeah. about that. So. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> it was just like, oh, yeah, like, did you ever? When's the last time you confirmed you were doing a Doom game? Like, it's always been unofficial, official. Like, well, it's it's, and then the last really we heard of it was that we're like, no, we're starting we're, over. We're just we're starting over. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Carmack gave up. <laughs> So, yeah. game. Um, no, I, so I was kind of thinking just now if there was a way to like post 15 minutes of our podcast at a time, I'd love to throw out our this just excitement about single player Call of Duty and the new Wolfenstein game right next to our whole banished conversation to see. <laughs> like how people would react to that. Like we we it. have a we have a wide range. I just that like that we can, can still be excited about this kind of stuff, um, which is really good because a lot of people have forgotten, just like with movies and just like with books, that you can have stupid fun and you can have intense fun, and it's yep. all still fun. But and it's so okay. Go fuck yourselves. Twelve and year it's olds o- should it's not okay. live together. I'm still sticking no. with that one. And watch yeah, out that's, for that's probably pretty good. Dinosaur yeah. child model. That's box card children's shit, and we all know that wouldn't work <laughs> this you know, modern days. I'm I'm excited for uh, the the South Park game. That's uh, I think it's a March fourth release. So they finally started showing gameplay of that. And the funny thing is, like the entire time they've been hyping this game, I forget this game's been in development for twenty three years or something. Um, yeah. It um they. I've always said they they're not showing us any gameplay. Like none of the screenshots are showing us anything. Turns out all those screenshots are pretty accurate because they just the game just looks like the damn show. And I don't know, like it it is going to be stupid, but I am such a big Matt and Trey fan that I am I am on board for however terribly awesome this game turns out to be. And uh um that's that should carry me right up to uh, Infamous for March. It should just be um, South Park and South Park and superheroes is going to be my be my march. But um, I don't like I watch this game. I don't know if it's going to be funny for twelve hours or twenty or however long the game is. It might only be funny for thirty minutes. Uh, but I just have been losing my shit watching some of this, some of the 
the cutscenes that are out there and just the gameplay. So I'm excited. It's a real game that is coming out because it's been in development forever. Yeah, I almost didn't believe the the, the pre order like selections on all the websites. I'm just like, yeah, I didn't either. No, I don't think that's real. I think you're just trying to get some money right now. I hope they. I hope somebody yeah. tells the story about how this game made. I'd, I'd be really curious to see what state it was in when Ubisoft bought it versus like, and what's happened since then. Um, mm-hmm. If it's been, if it has been done or if it's really just been an approval hell or that kind of thing. So, um, but uh, this game could be like, I, it could be the gamut, but I'm, I'm, I am on board. It could be completely broken, but I, I'm hoping it's, I'm hoping it's, you know, Super Mario RPG boat South Park. That's my, that's my hope. Because that's what the that's, those are. That's somewhat lofty. I thought you were going to say something <laughs> maybe not so lofty. <laughs> I hope it's just a really good game, but with like a really great background, like South Park. It'll be funny, <laughs> you know. Uh, my game pitch tonight uh, kind of goes back to uh, Strider in that I keep talking about how it refuses to be awesome. Like I am doing awesome things in this game, and my character doesn't give a shit. <laughs> so. I want some sort of game. It's probably has the attitude of something like Bullet Storm, um, where especially in a co-op game. Um, this also, yeah, this came up when I was thinking about war, playing Warframe online. I'm playing a lot more games online with friends, but we're not at the same screen. So it's like I just did something cool. I want you to revel in it with me because this is why I'm playing with friends and why I'm playing this game. So almost like some sort of ability where. Uh, you can almost force a replay on somebody. It's like, check out what I just did, like in the moment, or um, something where your char- you can make your character acknowledge how awesome he is. Because honestly, with big big action games, I like to kind of pause and just be like, I did that, fuck yes, and I want my character to be on board with me. Not enough characters cool, embrace the awesomeness. Yeah, well, I, even- I, I think... That's an interesting mechanic. I think that a lot of games could could take advantage of, because you know a lot of a lot of a lot of the consoles you know obviously are, are starting to have sort of that um, streaming ability. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking that you know just modifying that system to be able to sort of temporarily TiVo your game moment, and then to be able to push that in some way to someone else, you know that you're That's, you're yeah. actually interacting with not your streaming audience, but the person you're actually playing with. I think that, that, you know, or maybe even like a comparison of like their view versus your view of a situation and to be able to sort of watch it. Because, um, you know, every time, idea. every time I bounce in and out of playing sports games, like I was a big, like anytime they added instant replay to sports games, I just get in there and I tweak whatever play I just watched. I watch it from 19 different angles. Give me that in, a, in an action game so I can relive. Like, I want to see what that guy saw when, when I jumped off that ledge and got incredibly lucky or and blew myself up like i yeah. just well it's it's just taking spectator mode to a whole new level i think in that aspect because obviously if you're if you're in a multiplayer situation you can do spectator mode mm-hmm. but what if you're still playing the game you yeah. know yeah exactly I think, like i think um, you're i think you're onto something there the halo the the halo forge had that where you could it would save your replay of your entire match and you could go in and do that but i i want to like on the fly like mm. I want to take over your my co-op buddy's screen because I'm an asshole. And I'm just like, no, seriously, watch what I did with this sniper rifle. You won't believe it. Because, you know, I don't I don't get to have those moments when, like I used to when you had the co-op couch. You know what I mean? And Yeah. But also, I want to need my character's attitudes to change. I want them to be, like, I want them to, like that, that it sounds dumb, but that 50 cent game, Blood in the Sand. <laughs> You can you fucking get combos or continue combos by sh- by taunting the dudes after you've killed them, like you have a button to be like, bitch, and that like continues your combo till you shoot the next guy. And there was, I mean, it was that game was fun because I got it, was it right dumb. here. My, my, it's right here on my controller, actually. <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't. That's all it does. I mean, I guess that does happen to you when you're playing online multiplayer. Like I. You just you just want a virtual high five. Yeah, and I want to be able, I want to be able to virtual high five myself. That's what I'm saying. Like seriously, because Strider is virtu- way too cool with what he can do. It's just 
How does that? He's not dead. Yeah. <laughs> it's virtual, Ethan. It's virtual. But so, is I got it two, you? I got two is webcams it here, so. <laughs> yeah. I think it worked. All right. Uh. Let's get out of here with. Uh, I'm going to run down these new releases. You guys let me know uh, after the fact what has your attention coming up. Um, we've got Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2 for consoles and PC, uh, Magus for PS3. Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare for Xbox One and 360. I forgot it was coming in 360. Tales of Symphonia Chronicles for PlayStation 3. Thief for just about everything. Port Royal 3 Gold Edition for PlayStation 3. Uh, New Professor Layton game for the 3DS. And then the Resident Evil 4 HD remake is out on PC this week. Jason? Well, apparently, from what I read, Thief isn't as bad as everyone thought it might be. It's, it's those but it reviews, also is at the same time. Yeah, That's those the reviews, thing. man. Those have been the reviews are so very hard to 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 read and sort of come up with any sort of judgment call because I read I don't know I don't know what website it was. It might have been was it Polygon, maybe. I read their review and it was like like. There's a lot of really cool things about this game, but the story blows. Mm-hmm. Um, like you can't jump, and all this other stuff that we didn't like. But it's a cool game, and it's just like, huh? Like how is that a logical thought process? It's you mm-hmm. know basically what it seems seems to be that a lot of people are like maybe too afraid to say, yeah, it's a bad game, but I liked it. You know, like mm-hmm. that. Wh- why is that a bad thing? Like we were kind of talking about that earlier. Like. You can have a good time with a bad game, and it's still that makes it a good game. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, like I feel like this is a problem in the stealth, the stealth genre. Like it's like the game, if you approach it as what it's trying to do, like does it do the thieving things? Okay, like isn't that why you're playing it? Right. Um, yeah, I I don't envy anyone trying to make a story around a stealth game like that. So. It's well, you know, like, it was just like, yeah, they were like, the story's like weird and out of whack. The 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 characters' faces all look like you know they were mashed together in a microwave. Mm-hmm. It's just like, okay, you know, they're 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 trying to find all these things to nitpick at when they really all they want to say is, yeah, it's kind of bad, but I liked it. Yeah, <laughs> and it and it's so like, how many reviews of those do I have to read until I'm like, okay, I'm kind of interested about this. So like, really, when it comes down to it, it's just like. Okay, it's kind of bad in a lot of ways, but apparently you enjoyed it. That's all I need to know. It yeah, that those those reviews have been kind of frustrating and I'd say I'd say about the same thing to the uh Lords of Shadow 2 reviews, um which actually got really similar reviews to the first one. But uh I'm excited to play that game. I kind of fucked up. Uh I'm going to actually stream Mirror of Fate. I'm going to stream the uh the well they re-released it on the consoles, but the 3DS game cuz I got to I'm really I'm into Lords of Shadow for the story and the gothic adventureness of it, so I'm gonna play that before I play Lords of Shadow too. But it doesn't sound like they fix the game stuff with Lords of Shadow to make it fun for others to play. Um, I say that as a fan, like I got into it's kind of deliberate pacing in its combat in the first one, so it sounds like it's just more of the same, which is which is fine. But it doesn't sound like it's gonna win over anybody any new fans either. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, it isn't that earth-shattering Castlevania game that a site like HorribleNight.com might be anticipating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ethan? Um, you know, I, n- nothing's really... I, I mean, nothing's really stood out to me too much other than I wonder how Resident Evil 4, you know, how it feels after all this yeah. time. I mean, to me, that was one of the best Resident Evils in terms of gameplay. Um for me and so uh, I'm just really curious about that I don't know if I'm going to pick it up I don't know if I really need to revisit games like that but I'm just I'm curious about how how much HD makes a difference uh, and especially after playing Resident Evil 6 with the control stream uh, uh, control scheme being a little bit uh, more flexible I would say um, if it feels as tanky as I remember it feeling so um, I'll, I'll be curious I'm worried curious that the HD-ness that. might be a detriment more than an asset you know, I to me, I'm more worried about this precedent of HD releases when they it may not necessarily be it may not be necessary. I mean, I think I I don't know. I think that there's I don't know. I mean, 
yeah, I think that people are gonna. But it's like it's not uh, a full priced HD release, so it's it's no, it, which is which is fine. But I just I don't know. There's just something about some some HD releases, and I always get suckered into buying them too. But I'm just always like, you know what, what you know, the motivation. I'll, I don't know. I, I I'd rather you be working on a, a good Resident Evil game. You know, yeah. like I'm like eh, let the. You know, but not that an HD release takes that much time. But I'm just saying, like, I don't know. There's a lot. They, they're the market's getting somewhat flooded. Well, so Capcom and some company game companies still don't know quite what to do when re-releasing console exclusives. Because yeah. for for a while there, it was like you know when they made the jump to PS2 for Resident Evil. Um, I think it was PS2, like Resident Evil 4. That was a big deal because you know the GameCube when it came out, like there were only a certain certain amount of people that had that. Like it made sense to keep upgrading it but yeah this is a random appearance on pc but whatever i'll i'll take it yeah. i never finished that game so i kind of should do that i guess um mm. and then i was never thinking, finished resident evil 4 just no. to the list but i was thinking wow. like, i loved resident evil 4 it got hard and i yeah, i forget what happened um but uh if you look back you know at the turning point that resident evil 4 was think about like you're halfway through that game back in the day and like excited for what is happening with Resident Evil, and then someone can show you what Resident Evil Six is. Mm. Like, it'd be confusing. That is not the uh, the path I expected it to go when we got on that no, road. So that is true. Um, let's see here. Um, we're kind of running out of time, so shout outs and call outs. Uh, if you guys can just pick pick your favorite of of what you got here. Um. I'm going to go with, uh, I'm kind of, I think all these mods to NBA, NBA 2K14 are uh, kind of awesome and <laughs> hilarious to see the videos. I don't know if I'd ever install them, but first of all, like I keep, I always forget that NBA 2K14 is actually on PC, um, but it's, you know, PC mods are one of the distinct advantages of that platform. But uh, I was happy to see, first of all, that they upgraded the 2K13 version of Space Jam for 2K14. <laughs> So that was that was awesome. And then there's this the one that came out this week um, was the Avengers versus Justice League, and seeing like a point guard Captain America with his giant shield on his back in that 2K14 engine. There's just something so goofy about it that I can't look away. Um, and I just the fact that uh, people are doing that with this engine, like I don't know, I I don't expect them to do, to do that with sports games. You know what I mean? That that seems to appeal to a a crowd that you don't necessarily think is tinkering with under the under the hood and and doing fun things yeah. like this. So does, kind of breaking uh, that stereotype's cool, and those videos are hilarious. Does when the Hulk slam dunks? Does he say Hulk smash? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's just big big green dude. The uh, yeah, the Space Jam one looks creepy as hell because it does it looks like a bunch of furries playing basketball. So. But then they, but then they have like all the you know the NBA players animations before and after. Like it's just like seeing a still shot of it l- looks like one thing. Seeing it in action is just so so bizarre. It's, is is <laughs> Michael Jordan a character? Yes, because so, he okay. was. I think that's how it started. Because two K thirteen, he was like cover. Like it was like right. the big. I forgot. I don't know how they did it for two K fourteen. They probably ported some stuff over, but uh, they got hmm. him back in there. So. That, I think that's what started the whole Space Jam thing. We won't talk about the promise of Space Jam, Space Jam 2, but... Um, yeah. Uh, Jason, what's your shout-out? I will I will say real quick that, that the fact that I'm, you know, d- despite the, the largeness of it, you know, sort of the corporateness of it, the Titanfall beta was impressive to me. Um, just because, you know, they just, the, they did the right thing by releasing it to the masses to get a really good idea of how it's going to play out when the whole planet gets their hands on it, you know, so they were able to, you know, run test of how the servers were going to be able to handle things, kind of look at other people's videos to see if there were certain things that people were going to take advantage of and then tweak them and stuff like that. So I, mu- I must give it to, um, what is it? Is it EA in yep. this instance? Mm-hmm. Um, I must give them some props, uh, in this, realm because basically you know that it's it's not common for them to basically release because this is what only multiplayer so yeah. essentially you're getting the game like if you get into the beta program you're getting the game 
Hmm. Obviously, for only a brief period of time, but it really gives you a taste of like, is this going to be worth sixty dollars when it comes out? You know, and so for someone like me who was totally on the fence, like I, I was intrigued by the concept of the game, but I still kind of wanted to play it before I decided to shell out money. Will I shell it out day one? Probably not, but <laughs> eventually, you know, if there's still, yeah, I'm... you know, interest in it down the road, I'm probably going to pick it up because I was, I was very entertained and very impressed with what I saw. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, I haven't gotten to play it yet. I'm, I'm definitely on the fence. I'm kind of, st- I want to see what they do campaign wise one thing that i picked up that i didn't realize before is that the game is full of npcs as well as other multiplayer yeah. people it's like is yeah. it six on six is that how that works it's that's how it was whenever i was yeah. playing it so then, yeah but there are there's also fodder to shoot which i can right. get yeah. points that 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 sounds like fun to me so that was a mm-hmm. that was a hook that helped me i'm gonna still pay attention to it but um but well it just it just makes me wonder if you know what other big games are going to be you know doing that in this you know this point in time. Yeah, I don't know. like you yeah. know is the is the next big shooter game going to follow suit in? I mean, I think I'm sure everybody is watching. And, can I can I can I sell a sixty dollar multiplayer yeah. only game? Can I do that? And that's kind of you know that's Battlefield kind would of the, like to know. Do we seriously these single player campaigns? Just, yeah. Well, we're, we're yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, I, I'm watching it more from the, um, how the EA, like how the server stuff holds up. I know Microsoft's going to be helping yeah. with that, but just like the roughness of some of EA's launches and, you know, Battlefield 4 still has some issues out there. Um, right. so Titanfall Whoever. will be a big thing a big deal for them. Yeah. Whoever made that decision, like, Hey guys, we should probably release this into some sort of beta program to test our servers because, well, that didn't really work out the last time we tried it with Sim City. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, coming well, out with a game that, that was like multiplayer a, uh, only. It wasn't like a low, a, a load test. It was, I mean, this was something people could play. I think they did oh, yeah. a closed alpha. To there do was a closed test, but there was a closed alpha, and then they came out with the beta, which I think they said two million people signed yep. up for. Yep. They did a stress test. Uh, the game got broke for about seven to eight hours, and it seemed like the internet was somewhat calm during that period. I will <laughs> give I will give props to the internet for not freaking out the way they could have. Um, oh, they were busy freaking out about six for six. Oh, well, yeah, I'm yeah. sure they were. <laughs> but you know, it just it it was kind of a breath of fresh air for a big game to kind of take a. I, I kind of thought it was a risk when I first heard of it. I was like, they're really going to, you know, let people see this before they, you know, spend $60 and then get to experience it. So I don't know. It's, 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 it's definitely risky, but I think it's paying off for them because I think there's a lot of interest in the game now. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and maybe avenues that they weren't expecting. Be curious. See how that goes. It's, uh, it's going to be going to be a big deal. Yeah. Ethan, take us home. Um, so my call out more of a concern out or a caution out is a in in terms of um, semantics when you're talking about early release demos and that sort of thing Um, Double Bear Productions which is releasing Dead State which came out on Steam Early Access a few weeks back which is a game I've been anticipating big time it's a a, a turn based zombie survival game has a lot of cool qualities to it Um, the demo that came out the first seven days was uh kind of advertised as more or less being the complete game, just a small small snippet of it. Um, And I hope that they misspoke when they said that because at this point in time, there's some some issues with it, Uh, uh, generally speaking. There's some mechanical issues with it. Um, There are some just strange UI decisions, and I really think that uh, developers need to be kind of careful with this Steam Early Access because we've seen in the last few months that people are kind of skating on thin ice in terms of what should and should not be Early Access. And I think uh, Double Bear kind of took it to the next level by saying this is more of a demo, which it doesn't feel like it. At least I hope it's not a demo. So um, kind of a caution out to people right now looking at Dead State. Uh, I, I would definitely wait on it at this point. Um, I a little bit concerned for it. It still has some cool elements, but um, yeah, I don't know. It feels a little bit fishy. We're really gonna have to get some new definitions. Only having alpha beta I, demos yeah, and full releases see. is not gonna work anymore for people because people don't understand it at this point. And I think 
uh, d developers are also now getting a little bit confused about what all this stuff means and uh, with how vocal the internet has been in regards to, I mean, even Starbound, which is a game that when released was really good, people were still pissed about that. Any game that, I mean, Starbound, is that's a, that's a, that's a high bar to meet, you know, and so it got to be really careful with talking and, and it's almost like we have to reassure uh, or you have to reassure gamers that, so this isn't complete, it isn't complete, it isn't complete, and every time you update, you say it isn't complete because people aren't getting it, and um, that's that's not a good thing. Yeah, I, I want, some of these games need to carve some sort of path for the other ones, because they all think they're Minecraft in, in some respect, like, just these, this infinite beta. I was like, no, you need to, you need to give, show me when I'm buying this game, what is your, you know, I look, I go look, look at Planet Side 2, what's your you know, your your plan for the year. Like, where, where are you uh -huh. trying to get to? How can I, as a consumer, kind of tell how far along you are? Like, I, uh -huh. you know, because, yeah. again, like I, like I said, with the way I play early access games, if I'm interested and I buy it, I'm going to try it out the, that first week. But I'm not uh -huh. going to spend a bunch of time with it. I want to come back when it's, fe when it's feature complete. And yeah. I need to know when, when that happens, too. And, um, you know, some of them are just not being up front with um, what kind of state their game game is in. And then you look at like stuff like Rust that they are just, you know, that is a sandbox to them. Like, I, I don't know. We can get rid of the zombies, you know, zombies are gone. <laughs> and, yeah. And it's just like, do you, it's kind of cool in some respects, but like, let me know that when I'm buying it. And there's no good way for them to even lay that out in the way steam set up either. So yeah. it's, it's a mess out there. Well, it's and it's weird because this is an example of people doing kind of the opposite of maybe overselling what they're releasing and being not super cautious about semantics because, I mean, the gamers are a little bit more intelligent now. Well, I'd like to think they're a little bit more intelligent now. They kind of dig into things a little bit more. But demo, to me, release a demo, it, it, should, be as, it should be pretty close to the final project. Beta, you can still get away with stuff, but even then... Yeah, uh, I, I feel like stick with if you're gonna do it early access, just say it's alpha. Just say it's alpha. Yeah. I mean, that's your that's a safe bet at this point because you're gonna get ripped to yeah, pieces. Yeah, I'd love I'd love for it to be like I feel I could know a distinct difference between alpha, beta, and alpha, beta demo and release like that. Those uh -huh. those make sense to me. Early access. Some of these big, things yeah. things are pre alpha. Like ah, yeah. they don't even know what game we're making, but you know, here's some yeah. here's something that works. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. All right, fellas, that's going to do it uh, for the horrible show. Jason and Ethan, thanks for jumping on with me tonight. But, oh, Thank you. Fine. Yeah, whatever. Yes. Well, I was, kinda, I, I was, was going to kind of do a... Dinosaurs. Okay. <laughs> um, the horrible show will be back in two weeks. I kind of like that schedule. Let's just uh, ramp up for um, more dinosaur game pitches. And mm -hmm. um, that is, by the way, that is not the direction I thought that was going to go when I originally thought of it welcome. two weeks ago. So <laughs> it worked out. Um, and then uh, on HorribleNight.com, we're wrapping up the rest of our podcast. We've got the return of Super Gaming Best Friends this Saturday. We're going to try a Saturday morning show experiment. Um, and then uh, next week, you can catch Top Video Game Podcast um, at, during this time slot. And uh, more live gaming on our Twitch channel uh, throughout the week. And we'll catch you next time. See ya. Bye.